In 2009, I created this Olympic weightlifting program at a university, the same program I, or same university I graduated from. At the end of 2011, my team won the American Open. So I was actually coaching the, the number one team in the United States. Going into 2012, I was looking at a team, national championship title, uh, individual championship title. So everything was, was, was running great. 2012 was, was about to be a great year. So at the beginning of 2012, uh, about a month before the national championships, a month before one of the biggest qualifiers for the 2012 Olympics, the program I was coaching at, they informed me that February 6th would be my last day. So on February 6th, I packed up all my stuff from, from the university, all my gear. After I left the, the, a meeting with the vice president and after the director informed me that that was my last day, uh, I went to say bye to a few guys that were in the gym and I was walking out. I ran into one of my lifters that was the top lifter for, for the country of Brazil. At that point, I was trying to explain to him the situation that, hey, this is my last day, and I just completely broke down and, and was just in tears. I could, I could barely stand. So he was just like, coach, what, what is going on? Then I just kept explaining it to him, and, and tears were just, just flowing down my eyes. So I just put my stuff in, in the car. I, I, I drove off. It was around 3.30. And I remember just, I was just crying the whole time. I live about 30 minutes away and, and nothing but tears the whole time. I, I could barely like see the road. That's how hard I was crying. And I wasn't crying because I, I was fired. I was crying because this, this is what I'm passionate about. I started this program. I put everything into it. Not five hours a day, but 24 hours a day. I recruited lifters from all around the country. And this is, and, and they would make a decision like this. After I left the gym, I was actually supposed to go finish filming with Nickelodeon for this special that, that they had. It was with Gabby Douglas and Missy Franklin on this episode, and the producer was calling me, and I, I finally answered the phone, and I told him what happened, and, and he was just in complete shock. And I just informed him that I wouldn't be able to shoot. My brothers were shooting with, with him at that point, and I, was, and I just went home. So when I went home, I just kept the TV off and I just sat on the floor and I, and I cried the rest of that night. Just that entire night, I think I even took sleeping pills and just nothing, I still didn't sleep. So the next morning, I, I need to get ready to train. I still have this, this the national championships are coming up. This is, the 20, this is 2012, this is a huge competition. I have to get ready for this competition. But I, do I even want to do it anymore? Like, I, I'm 27. I, I've been doing this for 15 years already. Do I even need to win anything else? And you know what? I, I can't. No, this competition's coming up. I have to. I have to get ready for this competition. This is the national championships. So, so the next morning, I wake up and I'm ready to go. I go into a gym a few minutes away from me, the same gym I train at, like during the summertime. So, so I go there, fine, I have a place to train, no problem. And, and I'm just in the gym by myself now and like everything's quiet. Because even when I started lifting at 12 years old, there was no less than 30 people in the gym at a time. So at this program, this college program I started, it was probably no less than 50, 40 people in the building at one time. So now here I am in this gym and, and it's just me. It, it, I, I'm, playing, I'm playing the music and it's still silent. Everything is quiet. I, I think I'm, I'm lifting it, or it's a squat day, and I'm squatting up and, and, and I'm crying. So, so tears are, are rolling down my face, but, but I'm, and I'm, going, I'm still going hard, I'm still going hard. So, so the competition comes around, and whatever, I'm, I'm just gonna get it done, I'm gonna get it done. I, I'm, I'm as sad as possible, but I'm gonna give it everything I got at this competition. So I'm at the national championships in Columbus, Ohio. I believe it's the, it's the first week of March. Right after I weighed in, I, I ate, got some fluid back in me, and then I just sat down in my room. And it was time for me to go to the competition to start warming up. I didn't even wanna go out there. I was actually crying, I was just listening to music and I was crying. And I, and I figured this couldn't be the best situation but this is the situation that I have. This is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toughen it up and, and get on out there. So I'm warming up in, in, I'm warming up in the back. I'm missing lifts. 
Like this, this is a bad sign. You never want to li miss lifts at a competition. So I'm missing these attempts. So I go out there, first attempt, missed it. Second attempt, missed. Third attempt, missed it. I failed, I bombed out. I failed to complete any snatches. And that's how, that's how the day went and I probably could have predicted that weeks prior. Just with the, I, I just didn't have it. I, I didn't have any fire burning. After that competition in March, after failing to live, after putting in all those four years to, to get ready for the 2012 Olympics or, and, and all this stuff, I, I went back home and weightlifting was something I, I did not want to do anymore. I was physically done, mentally done, and my profession, I'm a weightlifting coach, but I didn't want, any, I didn't want anything to do with the sport. So I, I was just trying to figure out in those next months, what did I want to do with, as a professional? And then I think maybe a couple months later, I was like, you know what, this is what I do. I've, I've started this program in the inner city. I've become the first junior national, senior national champion for this program in, in, in St. Louis. I've created a college program that is, has is given scholarships to over 30 kids. I've coached hundreds of, hundreds of kids throughout the St. Louis area. I know I can, this is what I can do. I've been doing this. I've been successful at this. There's no way I can't allow my story to end like this. My story cannot be written this way. That this guy who, he bombed out of this competition, he was fired from this job, and he's just done. It, it's over with for him. No, that, that, that can't be my story. My story can't end like that. At this point, I had one of my brothers go join, go join a, pro, a program out of New Jersey. I found out probably seven days before he went there that he was going there. Okay, I, I, would, I would expect more, but okay. Then I'm thinking in about either July or August, one day before my other brother moved out to New Jersey, I found out he was going. I would have felt for, I, I would have thought that, that I've trained these guys for eight years, we grew up in the same house together, that I would be, that I would deserve a little bit more than that. So, so things like that, it, it, it put me down and it also picked me back up. Another guy I was, I was coaching for the past few years at that point, made the Olympic team for his country in Brazil. I got no invitation to that competition. Uh, I understand that I'm not a part of the Brazilian Federation, but I would think even, let me, let me be in the stand somewhere, I'll, I'll just cheer him on. I'll celebrate him there. I waited week before, day before, even the night of I was waiting on a phone call, like, you know what? These guys, they're gonna send me, <laughs> they're gonna send me a, a, a flight or something. They're gonna say, oh, well, we, we can get your flight, you get the hotels, something like that. It never happened. So at that point, I was, I don't know how, how low I can get. Maybe I got lower at that point. I don't, know if, I don't know if you can get lower than low. But at that point, nothing but fire. Nothing but fuel. Nothing but, you know what? <laughs> All these people that, that, that completely left when I had nothing, even though I would have gave them the shirt off my back, I would have died for these people. And these people couldn't even pat me on the back. They were already gone. When I moved to Los Angeles, I was just training. And everything I was doing by myself, I switched up the way I, I eat, uh, rehab, prehab, all these type of things. And just the intensity I was coming with every day reminded me of the rise of the phoenix. This person by himself, th this person rising from the ashes. So if you knew my story, you knew he's, he's, coming, from, he's coming from the bottom. He's born at the bottom, but in weightlifting terms, I'm rising from the ashes. So that's how Phoenix rises. Say I've been thugging all my life, man, I'm tired of this shit. Say I've been struggling all my life, man, I'm tired of this shit. And I've been drugging all my life, man, I'm tired of this shit. Man, I'm tired of this shit. So tired of this bitch and I've been struggling all my life, man, I'm tired of this shit. Say I've been thugging all my life, man, I'm tired of this shit. And I've been drugging all my life, man, I'm tired of this shit. But
Gino pass me that shit, that's how I deal with this shit Say I been struggling all my life, man I'm tired of this shit My dad is sick, my mama dope, that's some fucked up shit And my little brother snorting dope, he on that weak nigga shit And Rick is shooting up, I can't believe this shit Now the fam then came over and took all my mama shit Left us hurt, now a nigga can't sleep around this bitch Plus I'm sleeping with the enemy Bitch, you ain't no friend of me I'm glad Renita came and say the whole fucking family But I fucked up I was put money in the studio I was joking all my niggas woke Try to take care of my family though But that wasn't enough Now my dumb ass just blew a hundred grand, bruh And my little brother Junior Doing the same damn shit And Whitley and Renisha think they grown Cause they get some dick But Rodney got it made But he doing dumb shit Like stealing money out his mama purse My soul hurt And Jermaine just caught two murder charges Say I've been struggling all my life, man. I'm tired of this shit. Say I've been struggling all my life, man. I'm tired of this shit, and I've been drugging all my life, man. I'm tired of this shit, man. I'm tired of this shit. So tired of this bitch, and I've been struggling all my life, man. I'm tired of this shit. Say I've been thugging all my life, man. I'm tired of this shit, and I've been drugging all my life, man. I'm tired of this shit. But Gino pass me that shit. That's how I deal with this shit, and I got stabbed for the dirty shit. Did three years, call the thumb of charge. I'm doing time for this thugger, nigga. Nigga, I used to steal as much. Cuz, that's my fucking brother. Caught up for a ride, I learned that friend. I ain't the one that love you. Big cuz, you look up to him to the find out about the attention. Gossiping about doing the most, nigga. I'm struggling, ain't no difference. I'm walking out for the bar gate. Ain't trying to be back in prison. The game started to chase me and so tired of this bitch. And my sister that can scan the treat that nigga like we ain't family. My niece don't really love me. Get for what a mama saying. My daddy just hollered at me, what for real, I'm feeling fuck him But he put shit in my head, and I told nigga I love him And these niggas snakin' he heats, being out in that concrete Your mama bless you twice, don't let the street be number three Cause I grew up making noise, I know this guy gon' let me sleep Cause I hung with the cathodas, so Simon be lying sweet Say I been struggling all my life, man I'm tired of this shit Say I been struggling all my life, man I'm tired of this shit And I been drugging all my life, man I'm tired of this shit Shit, but Gino pass me that shit, that's how I deal with this shit. Say that. Oh, I repeat my motherfucking mind. Daddy Willie and Juan, man. Smith. Shout out to my real nigga, my fam. I love y'all, niggas, man. BA gang forever. Still have fam. Tune is rich. Tickets and beats and everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? I love my motherfucking fam, man. Even shout out to my low niggas, you know? Q-Low, J-Low, New-Low. Niggas too. Yeah, yeah, it's